Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Well, this is going to be a new one for this channel, Invertebrates. While I'm generally far more familiar with the evolution of tetrapods, I was asked to cover the history of the soft-bodied cephalopods by a patron, and thought it was a really interesting idea. These include the modern octopi, squid and cuttlefish, which are all members of the successful clade Coleoidea, which first appear in the fossil record during the early Carboniferous, about 330 million years ago. Although DNA analysis has suggested that they diverged before this during the Devonian, almost 400 million years ago. Before considering the diversification of the coleoids, which mostly took place during the Mesozoic, I'll briefly outline the early evolutionary history of the cephalopods as a whole, which means going back further in time than we've ever gone before, to the Cambrian. This archaic time is famous for the explosion of new multicellular lineages, many of which represent the ancient ancestors of modern groups. Among these were basal mollusks, one of many clades of invertebrates that went on to great success. Although living representatives of mollusca are highly diverse, ranging from the relatively obscure worm-like aplacophorans to the more famous gastropods, bivalves, and, of course, the cephalopods. Although these forms all look very different, they share a number of distinctive anatomical traits, including bilateral symmetry, a broad muscular foot on the underside of their bodies, a rasp-like feeding organ called a radula, and the large digestive cecca. The cephalopods, meaning head feet, modified these structures and developed their own unique suite of features, including, as their name suggests, a prominent head, tentacles formed from a modified foot, and the presence of a chambered shell from which water can be expelled through a structure called a siphuncle. Ancestral forms from the Cambrian also tended to possess protective shells, with the proposed common ancestor of cephalopods resembling a small, simple, snail-like animal, much like the modern monoplacophorans. From this basic body plan, the earliest known relatives of living octopi, squid and nautiloids first appear in the late Cambrian, between 501 and 485 million years ago. The best known representatives were animals such as Plectronocerus, a tiny genus that would have resembled a limpet, except possessing simple eyes and a shell that looked like a pointy wizard's hat, measuring only a few centimetres long. It is proposed to have lived mostly on the seafloor, slowly trundling around and feeding on tiny microorganisms. Indeed, it would have looked to us much like a cute tentacled gnome snail, except that its distinctive cephalopod shell allowed it to float upwards in the shallow waters in which it lived, both to feed and escape from predators. Cephalopods survived the extinction event at the end of the Cambrian, and became better adapted for a life more in the open ocean, developing shells that were more curved and rounded. The unnatural grouping known as nautiloids proved very successful from the Ordovician to the Devonian, with some forms developing into very large predators, such as Endocerus, an ambush hunter with an incredibly long straight shell that measured at least 5 metres or over 18 feet long. Such shelled forms, while once very common, are only represented today by the six species of Nautilus. These floating, round-shelled animals are opportunistic carnivores that are restricted to the warm Indo-Pacific region and superficially resemble the extinct Ammonites but are not closely related to them, actually being more basal. The common ancestors of the nautiloids, and the main subject of this video, the so-called soft-bodied coleoids, diverged during the Devonian about 400 million years ago. This successful group, which contains the octopi and squid, developed an internalised shell instead of an outer protective one, which is referred to as a gladius, that is utilised for buoyancy or muscle anchorage. This gives coleoids a somewhat fleshier appearance and has forced this group to find other means of defence and escape from predators, including the ability to change colour, spray predators with jets of ink, and perhaps most interestingly of all, have developed large complex brains, making them the most intelligent of all invertebrates. Although some fossils from the Devonian have been attributed to coleoids, paleontologists are not agreed on their identity. Early forms from the Carboniferous would have already resembled modern squid and cuttlefish, such as Gordoniconus, which still possessed a pointed outer shell. From animals similar to this, 
two major cephalopod clades split off during the Carboniferous as well. These were the Bellumnites and the squid of the family Decabrachia. The former were highly successful and looked much like squid, except they were equipped with ten arms and lacked tentacles. Fossil remains often consist of the calcite guard at the rear of the animal's body, which functioned to counterbalance the weight of the head. Bellumnites were predatory, actively swimming in nearshore and mid-shelf oceans, with their side fins flapped for low energy propulsion. They were also capable of the jet propulsion seen in modern cephalopods, which would have helped them to escape from ichthyosaurs and other marine reptiles. Alongside their distant cousins, the shelled ammonites, these were the dominant group of cephalopods during the Mesozoic, although it has been debated as to whether they are a natural grouping or not. Like the ammonites, they died out at the end of the Cretaceous due to the devastating impact of the KPG extinction event on marine life. Following this event, the modern types of cephalopods, squid, cuttlefish and octopus, radiated in the Cenozoic in all oceans. In the North Pacific, however, a faunal turnover from Bellumnites to the modern type of cephalopods about 35 million years before the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event documents a more complex evolutionary history of cephalopods than previously thought. Indeed, it has been demonstrated that the modern cephalopod groups originated and diversified in the North Pacific region during the late Cretaceous, with the extinction event wiping out their competition and enabling them to thrive going into the Cenozoic. Most recent studies place the familiar squid of decapodiforms as the sister group of the Bellumnites. These are quite the diverse group in modern times, although as mentioned earlier, they started out their major radiation at the end of the Cretaceous. Unlike the octopi, squid still possess an internal chitinous gladius, derived from the ancestral mollusk shell. They are also known for their ten arms. Two of these have formed greatly elongated tentacles for grabbing prey. The oldest definitive squid group with living representatives are the Spirulidans, with early Cretaceous forms from the Caucasus. Only a single species from this group is still around today, with this being the ram's horn squid, a rarely seen deep sea animal with a distinctive curled internal shell. Measuring between 3.5 and 4.5 centimetres long, the distinctive cuttlefish also originated during the Cretaceous, with the oldest known forms appearing during the Maastrichtian of what is now the Netherlands. With their large W-shaped pupils and unique internal cuttle bone, they are among the most intelligent of all invertebrates and generally live in fairly shallow coastal areas. Another successful modern squid group, the mostly pelagic Oegopsida, also emerged during the late Cretaceous, mostly in the North Pacific. One genus, Yezotuthis, from the Santonian or early Campanian of Hokkaido, Japan, was very large, rivalling the living giant squid in overall length, reaching over 5 metres or 16 feet long. It was almost certainly a top-order carnivore in its environment, living alongside the slightly smaller Haborotuthis. In 2023, the remains of an even larger squid were found in the Yezo region, consisting of jaw fossils which were more massive than those of Yezo Toothis, although it is currently not certain which genus these belong to. Most of the specific families of decapodiforms seem to have originated during the Cenozoic, after the KPG extinction event wiped out the Bellumnites, whereupon they radiated wildly into dozens of groups. The other major lineage of modern cephalopods are the octopodiforms, which seem to have a more extensive Mesozoic fossil record than the squid. The oldest known stem octopus relative was the recently described genus Simpsilipomodi from the Carboniferous between 330 and 324 million years ago. Measuring about 12 centimetres or 4.7 inches long, this small animal pushed back the origins of the true cephalopods by around 82 million years. With 10 robust appendages complete with suckers, an elongated gladius and terminal fins. This genus would have strongly resembled a squid far more than an octopus, suggesting that this body plan was ancestral among derived coleoids. However, more clarification is needed to prove the identity of this animal for certain. The inclusive lineage leading to modern octopi are defined by the possession of eight limbs, lacking the two greatly elongated tentacles of squid, a bulbous hollow mantle fused to the back of the head, and soft, malleable bodies. The first relatives of the broader octopus clade first appeared during the Jurassic, 
with forms such as Proteroctopus, an oceanic hunter from France. Recent studies have found this animal to be a close relative of the living vampire squid, which, despite its name, is a close cousin of octopi. Today, this small, dark-coloured cephalopod is represented by just a single genus and species, Vampyrochuthis infernalis, which means vampire squid from hell, a deep-sea specialist about 30 centimetres or about a foot long, with its body covered by light-producing photophores, and its eight arms connected by a webbing of skin. With a slow metabolism, it feeds on zooplankton and general detritus, avoiding predators by utilising a defence mechanism of covering its body with its webbed skin, presenting a spiky, unappealing blob. If highly agitated, it will launch a bioluminescent mucus at predators, as it lacks a functioning ink sac. A few relatives are known from the fossil record, including the Middle Jurassic Vampiro Nasser from France, which is an active pelagic hunter, unlike its living cousin. Meanwhile, the early Oligocene Necrochuthis was a deep sea specialist like the modern vampire squid, probably moving into this niche due to competition from true squid. Members of the more derived Octopoda first appear during the late Cretaceous, although their soft bodies are certainly not ideal targets for fossilization. Several species have been described from Santonian and Cinnamanian aged rocks in Lebanon between 97 and 90 million years ago, including Paleoctopus. The two major modern groups of octopuses, the Sirena and Insirena, also diverged about this time. The former make up the finned deep sea octopuses, which possess small reduced internal shells, hair like filaments near their suckers, and two fins on their heads which are traits completely absent from Inserinians. These are generally quite blobby in appearance, with some forms such as the Dumbo squid and the flapjack octopus being among the cutest of invertebrates. The oldest known species date from the Maastrichtian. The Inseratans are the more diverse group, containing the classic benthic octopuses, as well as more bizarre specialised forms, such as the floating open ocean Argonauts which have developed a pseudo-shell and convergently resemble nautiloids and ammonites. These lack an internal shell and head fins, having a poor fossil history due to their soft bodies not being conducive to preservation. Highly intelligent animals, octopuses display complex problem-solving techniques, engage in play and show the ability to learn from past mistakes. Their boneless bodies make these cephalopods master escape artists in captivity able to climb and squeeze through tiny openings. The incredible success of the coleoids as a whole can mostly be attributed to the KPG extinction event, much like the great radiations of placental mammals and neonathene birds. In the case of modern cephalopods, the demise of the belemnites and ammonites made room for squid and octopuses to diversify in their place. Although these animals were certainly around during the Cretaceous as well, just at lower frequencies than today. It also probably didn't help that ammonites were often specialised filter feeders, which put them in the firing line once oceanic conditions became far more hostile after the bolide impact. Thanks to this devastating event, we are left to marvel at these alien geniuses of the deep that have often inspired both wonder and terror in equal measure. Thanks for watching everyone. In the next episode I'll be returning to the shadowy realm of cryptozoology. Having already covered the Bunyip a few years ago, I think it's time that I examine another of Australia's most famous cryptids, the Yowie. See you again soon. Cheerio.